experiment, we are going to perform the calorimetry. Our goal is to determine the energy represented by Q and the heat capacity or also known as the specific heat and the intended learning outcomes. After the experiment, you're going to know the principle of calorimetry as well as you'll perform simple calorimetry experiment. Calorimetry, by definition, is the science of measuring heat based on observing the temperature change of the body when it absorbs or releases energy in the form of heat. Well, the calorimeter is a device used to calculate energy, but this does not uh, actually measure energy, instead the change in temperature. So it measures the temperature change involved in a chemical reaction or a phase change. And eventually, we will use this data to calculate the energy and the specific heat. Calorimeter or calorimetry comes from the word calorie, which is the unit to measure the energy. For this experiment, we're going to use the styrofoam cup as our calorimeter because this material is a good insulator and we assume that the styrofoam cup is a perfect insulator. It means that there's no heat loss or gain from the surrounding and from the system. When a reaction or phase change takes place, the water in the cup will absorb or release the energy from the system, which is the chemical reaction of the substance. And the thermometer will measure the change in the water's temperature. So we'll make sure that our styrofoam cup is properly covered with the stopper so that it will minimize the release of the heat from the cup. Because the mass change in temperature and specific heat of water is known, the energy absorbed or released by the water can be calculated using this equation. Energy or Q equals to the mass times the change in temperature times the specific heat of water. In this equation, Q is the unknown and we can determine the mass if we don't have the device to measure the mass of water. We can calculate through the density and its volume which is density is equals to 1 gram per cubic centimeter or simply 1 gram per milliliter times its volume which was discussed in our previous lesson and the change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature and the specific heat of water which is equals to 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. The specific heat is a physical property of matter that establishes the amount of heat in joule that is required to increase the temperature of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. In the case of water, it takes 4.184 joules of energy to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. The first law of thermodynamics states that the energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So as a result, the net energy of the universe or any process or reaction has to be zero. And according to the law of conservation of energy, the amount of energy released by the system is equal to the amount of energy absorbed by the surrounding, in our case is water. So Q of the surrounding or water equals to the Q of the 
system. The cube water we determined previously is equal to the Q or energy of the system. But if we analyze the chemical system, so there are two parts of the action or the process. So that is the system or the chemical reaction and the surrounding, which is in our case is water. Sometimes it's the solution, a okay, solution, the cup, or in any form that surrounds the system. So whatever is lost or gained by the system has to be in turn equally gained or lost by the surrounding. So if the surrounding, which is the water, if the temperature of water went up, it means that the energy was lost by the system and that the surrounding or water absorb or gain the energy released by the system. In this case, the energy Q of surrounding is positive and the energy of system is negative. Vice versa, if the temperature of water went down, that means the surrounding lost energy and the Q is negative and the system gained energy and the Q of the system has to be positive. So now that we have determined the energy of the system, which is either be positive or negative, that means it's either be absorbed or released energy, which is equals also to mass times the change in temperature times the specific heat of the substance. So in this case, the specific heat of the substance is unknown. So we're going to determine its specific heat by rearranging the equation. So that will be equals to the energy of the system over the mass and its change in temperature. So now we're going to have some example of the calorimeter that is used in the laboratory. So this is an example of a calorimeter that is usually found and used in the laboratory. At your upper left are the substances and these substances have different heat capacity or specific heat. That means that different substances can require more energy to raise to a certain temperature. For example, for copper, it may have required less energy to raise into a certain temperature than that of a silver with the same mass. So in the simulation, our substance is the system and the water is the surrounding. So we'll try to determine the, in the calorimetry experiment and we're going to determine the heat capacity of certain substance. So now if we'll try the copper as our substance and the copper is 20 grams temperature of copper at 20 degrees Celsius and we have 30 grams of water in the calorimeter at the same temperature. Now we're going to put the metal into the calorimeter and we'll see if there's a change of energy. In this simulation, it shows the graph of the temperature and we can observe that there's a constant temperature, meaning that there's no change of temperature during this process. This is because at this condition, the kinetic energy of metal is the same as the kinetic energy of the water. So there is no change of energy at this condition. 
Now we'll reset the calorimeter and set the copper to 200 degrees Celsius and put inside the calorimeter. You can now observe that in the graph, there's an increase of temperature of the water. That is because the energy of the copper transfers into the water and that causes the water to get hotter. Now, if you can have the final temperature of 30.41 degrees Celsius, and in the simulation, it shows the specific heat of copper. But in the actual experiment, we can manually calculate the specific heat of metal or the copper. Since you have the mass of copper and the mass of water, also given are the initial temperature of copper and initial temperature of water. We can determine the final temperature for both copper and water, which is 30.41 degrees Celsius. So using the formula, Q equals to mass times specific heat times change in temperature. So we can determine the energy and the specific heat.